Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to talk about carbon dioxide, and specifically about how much of it will we have in about 100 years, and more importantly, when will it become uncomfortable to breathe on our planet? Will we ever reach a level when carbon dioxide actually kills us, because we can't survive breathing on this planet anymore? Let's find out using Universe Sandbox and the simulations in the game. Welcome to What The Math. So right here under climate, we have a really cool simulation of greenhouse gases. Now this is actually going to be based on a lot of scientific theories that might be denied by the current um, US government because the Environmental Protection Agency just lost its uh, funding from the government because a lot of people don't seem to believe in the greenhouse effect or in the effect of carbon dioxide. In this video, I'm going to express my own view and my own belief that yes, this stuff is important and we need to watch out for it. But we're going to basically mostly talk about this principle of PPMV. This is parts per million of volume of carbon dioxide in the air, often um, basically used to measure how much carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere. Because at some point, as this uh, number rises, this will very likely increase the average temperature of our planet and very likely start melting the ice caps, increasing the level of water on our planet. And amongst other effects, we might also experience the deforestation, the decrease of various algae and of various um, plant life in the water as well, or possibly an increase in certain other life types. But let's not talk about any of this just yet. This will be saved for another video Today we're only talking about carbon dioxide, its hazardous levels in, um, in the atmosphere, and how much of this will change with years. Alright, so, first I need to explain to you how we're going to do this. We're going to use these RCP scenarios known as representative concentration pathways. These were developed by the scientists to uh, basically express four potential scenarios. 2.6, 4.5, 6, and 8.5 refers to uh, basically how much we believe humanity will change in the next few years. This one here assumes that until about 2020, there will be a slight increase in carbon dioxide, but after that we'll smarten out and we'll stop releasing carbon dioxide as much. So in other words, the levels will start dropping. This one here takes us to about 2040. And so we think that humanity after 2040 will finally smarten out and stop releasing carbon dioxide. This one takes us to 2080. We think that it will take us until 2080 to realize the atmosphere is changing, and after 2080, it will start decreasing the levels. This one assumes the worst. It assumes that we don't learn, we don't realize that carbon dioxide is changing the atmosphere, and we continuously release it. We're gonna do this for fun just for now. And if I actually enable this right away, watch what happens. We are already at level 500. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to the pre-industrial level. And the level um, in the pre-industrial world was about 277. Actually, I need to disable this because otherwise it will not work. 2077. This is actually available, um, and all of this data is available from a really cool website called CO2.Earth. If you go to CO2.Earth, you can find these, um, uh, basically these data that have been gathered from, uh, from the ice shelf, from various um, ice accumulations around the planet, where people have measured that, you know, and up until about the year 1800 or possibly even 1900, the average carbon dioxide level on our planet was about 277. Then in the 1900s, it started to increase slowly. And by 2014, 2015, it reached the level of 400. It's actually currently that I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm looking at the page right now, it says 406. The year is 2017, the level is 406 ppmv. This means that there is about 858 um, billion ton of carbon in the atmosphere that has been released, and it's still increasing. Well, right. So so far, so good. So let's actually maybe start from that. Um, we know that if you if we follow the scenario known as RCP 8.5, it will actually increase much faster than that. So we're going to go for the worst possible scenario. Let's let's see what happens. So uh, by the um, year 2024, carbon levels will be at 507 ppmv. 
So it's increasing really fast. This is only about seven years after I'm making this video. Um, we're going to accelerate the time a little bit here. And we're going to basically watch how all of this changes. And let's actually also look at another thing. Let's look at the temperature, surface temperature of our planet. I'm going to look at this graph as well. So um, you can see that the PPMV is basically increasing by about two to three per year. And this is assuming that we don't stop releasing carbon dioxide. We constantly build new factories, uh, use fossil fuels to release more and more stuff. So nothing changes. Basically, life goes on as usual. We ignore the effects of carbon dioxide and it's being, uh, it's being released into the atmosphere. The critical level the scientists believe will actually dramatically affect our planet is usually 450. Uh, this is when scientists think that the actual sea levels will um, dramatically increase by about at least 30 centimeters or around the world, meaning that some of the areas will be flooded completely. Um, it's not really proven, it's just a hypothesis, but I kind of think it's possibly true. Anyway, we're going to not talk about this just yet. So the year is 2036. This is like what? Um, at least 19 years after I, I started making this video. Look at how much temperature has actually increased every year. This is the average increase. We're now at at least one degree higher, one and a half degree higher than we used to be. So every single year, the temperature climbs. You can kind of see the graph increasing. And this will become more and more dramatic as we go along. Now, obviously this will melt some of the ice. Obviously this will increase some of the water levels. And we can actually change this in the game manually by going in here and changing this. Let's assume some of the ice caps have actually melted, increasing this to about 1.37. The face of the earth will change a little bit. Uh, the most uh, effect you'll see is probably from countries like Brazil. So here, if I were to change this back to what it used to be, this is what it used to be like, and this is what it looked like before. So you can kind of see some of the coastline will actually be, be affected from this change right here. This is only after um, something like 20 years. Let's go back to the PPMV values and also the consistently climbing surface temperature. We're now at 700 ppmv. Uh, so this is where um, things will start kind of looking a little bit different for us. We'll actually start getting affected by this in terms of um, feeling different um, and smelling the air or the quality of the air. So up about a thousand ppmv, though it's not a big deal. As a matter of fact, if you're sitting in your room right now and watching this video, it's very likely that this could be up to a thousand. This is basically what a stuffy room feels like. If you open a window, it kind of decreases, but you know, it can be up to a thousand and you won't really feel a difference. So let's see how long it takes us to kind of go um, past that. Let's see how long it takes us to get uh, our earth to feel like a big stuffy room. So the year is now 2059. We're almost at 800 ppmv. We're going to accelerate time just a little bit. And right around, I guess the year 2000, maybe seven or so, it will uh, it will actually start feeling very different. So after a thousand PPMV, that's when you actually start feeling a little bit drowsy and a little bit uncomfortable. If you are ever in a room that's very stuffy, that's full of CO2, you will not feel very well. You actually might even develop a headache. And this is what earth will feel like if, I mean, assuming that we still release as much carbon dioxide as we do today, um, this is what Earth will start feeling like by the year 2000. It looks like it's going to be maybe 77. 2077. So there we go. Stuffy room. The Earth. Now, by then, maybe many of us will not be around anymore. But you know what? Your kids will be here. Your grandkids will definitely be here they will feel kind of uncomfortable. All right, so what's the next uh, level that's sort of important? Well, this is, oh, I actually, let's check the temperature first. Average temperature is now at 18 point, okay, let's just call it 19, 19 degrees, four degrees warmer than it used to be. The actual ice caps are definitely struggling. They're still there, but not as much ice as it used to be. The level is probably increased by about 50 centimeters by now. So most of the coastline will look a little bit different. We can change that here by going in here and changing this to eight. 
So let's see what happens. A little bit of change, not dramatic, but you can kind of see that India actually was affected quite a lot by this. I believe this was not uh, islands before. Now it is. Anyway, moving on. So, at around 2000, PPMV of 2000, this is when you will actually start having um, a lot of headaches. You will become very sleepy. You will feel very stuffy. And you'll also suffer from poor concentration and focus. In other words, this is just outside of, you know, outside of your room. Inside the room, it will be even worse. So being inside will become very difficult without some kind of an air purification system. How long will it take us to get to 2000? Well, let's do some math. We're currently increasing our uh, levels at around 30 giga um, carbon tons per year. So how long to get to 2000? We need about... 30 years to get there so by the um year 2110 which is what we're going to advance to right now we will now be at the level when basically you'll start feeling super uncomfortable being outside this is essentially when things will not be very well for us a lot of people will start getting sick um a lot of people will not be able to go outside without air purification and uh, look at those caps they're totally disappearing now this means that the sea levels will rise dramatically uh, very likely affecting the face of many different continents like for example look at that in australia there's a kind of a new lake developing in the middle and i, I guess one of the most affected places would be florida and parts of brazil where things will look very differently once this reaches the level of all of the ice caps melting so this is the face of north america changed quite a lot brazil has a lot more rivers in it now um and what, what about the climate so we're now at close to what 31 ish degrees celsius it's still rising very very hot about 15 degrees higher than it used to be most places that are on the equator will be practically unlivable you will not be able to survive here it will be way too hot you'll still be able to live in the north not so much in the middle possibly suffering in some of the um, southern countries as well including countries like brazil now this is at 2000 ppmv this only took us about 100 years to get to maybe just a little bit over 100 years the next level is 5000 this will not happen for some time of course but it will take us just over 100 years to get there so at uh, assuming that we still haven't learned our lesson ass assuming that we still don't believe a greenhouse effect does anything and we're still releasing as much greenhouse as we did before or maybe just for some reason we realize that you know it doesn't really matter we'll we come up with new technologies we are now breathing differently uh, using some kind of a really cool breathing device 100 years later we'll reach a level of 5000 and this will happen around 2232 and basically, this is when things get really bad. This is known as the workplace exposure limit. If you're ever working in a company that has a lot of CO2 emissions, if you're inside a room that has 5,000, you will be asked to leave immediately. This is basically a, a sort of an environment where you can kind of maybe possibly survive for about eight hours without you know, getting kind of really sick. But after that, you'll get way, way too sick and you'll very likely pass out and maybe even die so this will only happen about just over 200 years of emission um, emission of co2 or um, emitting a lot of fossil fuel stuff into the air the temperature right now is around 37 degrees celsius so not as hot um, not, not as much of a difference as it was before but still pretty hot and most of the continents by then will will have changed completely so like for example countries like indonesia that used to have a lot of islands will not have as many islands or as much land australia has uh, transformed dramatically new zealand not so much and countries like um, russia and china will that have a lot of coastline will very likely be affected quite a lot as well so you can see there's all of the all of this new water in russia that didn't exist there before so what's the next level when we should we actually be sort of worried that we're going to die so this is this level is known as 40,000 or the hazard level basically the level at which you basically kind of sort of die if you were in a room or in a location that has 40,000 ppmv which is the number that we were changing right around 
here. If this ever becomes 40,000, we'll basically all suffocate to death. Will it ever happen? Well, very unlikely. But you never know. If there's a, on top of all of the fossil em fossil emissions, if there's a, like a few volcano eruptions that release a lot of CO2, it actually might happen. Now, if we were to emit as much CO2 as we emit today, continuously, how long will it take us to reach that level? Basically, how long before we all suffocate and die? How long until the human extinction from suffocation? Well, we're not going to do this manually. Let's do some math. So, all right, we're at 5,346 right now. We're emitting about 30 um, gigatons of uh, carbon per year, and we need to get to 40,000. And the year is 3,337. The year when the climate change becomes the point of the end of humanity. We now have reached 40,000 ppmv. We are very likely are going to perish. This is basically... If we were to release as much CO2 as we release right now, would be the point of no return for the humanity. Now, obviously, this will not kill all of the creatures on our planet. Many uh, creatures and many um, plants, for example, might actually love this environment. Lots of CO2, very warm, very hot, amazing new environment to live in places like Antarctica. Because uh, there's not going to be very much ice here, but a lot of land that the plants can survive on. For humans, though, we cannot live in these conditions. This is the hazard level that will kill any human that enters this room within a few minutes. It's basically when you cannot breathe anymore. It's essentially 6 to 7% concentration of CO2 in the air. And it's something that we'll never recover from. And anyway, yes, this was a gloomy conclusion and sort of a, a scary conclusion to uh, human race and also to this video but that's really what, what i wanted to talk about in this video i wanted to talk about the greenhouse gases i wanted to introduce the idea of the greenhouse uh, scenarios that you can explore if you ever actually read any of the um, articles that i'm posting in the description below but also i wanted to introduce you to this cool website called co2.earth where you can actually see the current condition of ppmv on our planet earth depending on the location so from what I've seen so far, we're currently at 406. It's already six higher than it was about two years ago. Is carbon dioxide increasing or is it a conspiracy? This is for you to decide and to read those papers that I'm posting in the description. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with someone who you think might enjoy learning through video games and wants to learn a little bit more science and math using fun stuff. And if you want to support this channel, don't forget that there's Patreon that does help me make better videos in the future. And if you actually care about Earth and don't want to live in a place that has 54 degrees Celsius, also known as average temperature, then maybe, just maybe, consider uh, thinking about how can we actually maybe reduce the emissions? How, what can we actually do to stop emitting so much carbon dioxide and increasing the greenhouse uh, gases in our atmosphere? Maybe some people do not believe this and will never will, but we'll definitely see the effects in the next few years. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Space out. I'll see you later. Let's maybe end this video on a bright note by, yeah, destroying our planet Earth in a different way with explosions and stuff. How about we launch uh, this thing at it? Here comes beautiful Sedna as it's going to pass very close to our planet Earth and possibly... Oh, no, it's going to collide on the side there. There we go. The end of humanity. So we don't have to suffer through this whole greenhouse business. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.